Hey, what's going on, guys? Dropship Tyler here, and today I'm bringing you this podcast with Matt Gambrell. Uh, we did this podcast at around 1 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, I may or may not have had a few drinks before deciding to get on and do this podcast. So if it sounds like uh, I'm getting kind of tired towards the end, that's the reason. But yeah, there's lots of value to be had in this talk. Uh, we touch on a lot of different subjects, just kind of having an open discussion about you know our businesses and where we've been, where we're going, uh, etc. So hope you guys enjoy it. It's actually been a minute since we you know we caught up on stuff anyway. Um, how's business? Things are good. Things are good. Just a uh, um, couple things that we're really just trying to transition into, uh, and I'm actually just, uh, it's very ironic, and I was uh, going to just bring this up because Alex Becker was doing, kind of just changing everything he's doing, like not trying to be all about just Lambos and, you know, just nice, you know, like lifestyle marketing. He's just trying to like focus on, on him and himself, and that's kind of what I'm trying to do, and, and I'm actually moving to the Philippines for anywhere from one to maybe six months. So just focus on my teams and building, you know, all like like actual quality, quality, like higher quality work and really making sure that I can be the best me, my team can be the best team, and you know, I can be have have the best, you know, products and services, uh, no matter what that is. Um, and being in the Philippines is just like you're free from every single distraction from I hate to say it like this, like you, you you do have to understand there are a lot of things that can come into play where um <laughs> you, uh, p other people coming in your life that, and, and it's nothing like, I, I don't like to say like, oh, hey, this person is, like, I don't want to go to this person's thing or, you know, this birthday or whatever. I, I, I do. I do want to always show my support. But unfortunately, sometimes um, being consistent in your business is like the most important thing. Um, and sometimes, like, you'll, you'll see it where, you know, you miss, you miss one day where, uh, of consistency or you go out and, and it just throws off that whole week. Like the momentum you thought you had is just like reset back from scratch. You gotta, you gotta be so disciplined in your craft. You can't let anything distract you because momentum is so huge in this business. And the moment that you get off course, I mean, it feels like you're just resetting everything, and you gotta like kind of start over almost. I mean, I know that's not, I know that sounds drastic, but in some cases, it really is. It's true. Right, and I mean, like for me, you, you uh, like I'm. A very passionate guy. I, I sacrificed absolutely everything I possibly could to to build my business. Like, and maybe unlike some people, I mean, I I was one of the old pioneers. Like, I mean, you know, five years into doing e-commerce, so a lot of people kind of came out of the woodworks later. Um, and I know people that have been doing it for you know like five, ten years, like you know Roger Lang Langel and all these people like back in the uh, the day day. So, but I mean, I I did kind of. I mean, I've been doing this a minute, so I mean, it's just being able to kind of come back to. Um, you know, like in Rocky too, and just really make sure uh, I, I get my mindset uh, where I need to be and, and able to. Because uh, I mean, back back then, I mean, every day, like it was like it was like a week. Like I mean, what I got in what what I got done in one day was basically like what I, what I get done in, in a week. Um, compar comparatively speaking, and it's just like it's ridiculous. Like I mean, I, I just could do so much. Um, and so, uh, just being able to obviously free yourself up from a lot of distractions is, is really important in your business. Um, and if you put in a lot of work and you put in a lot of sacrifice, um, and you know you're not getting what you want, ultimately you have to you know be willing to, to do that again, start over. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of big time guys do that. I mean, you know, Gary Vee, a lot of, a lot of people have to start over in their business, and that's it's very important to do that. Um, you know, it, 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 multiple times you know, throughout your you know business career or or entrepreneur as you're an entrepreneur if you have multiple businesses I mean starting some of them over or just trying to make sure that you really um, grasp because the the market changes a lot of people don't understand that like the, everything changes and and when you can kind of reset you can see and feel all those new changes and then understand like okay. Um, this is completely different from you know when I was you know super immersed in, in it uh, from the get go. So I have to really, really, really make sure that uh, all the seams are tied and, and uh, there's every safeguard um, is is like hedged and every and every way should perform. So yeah, um, yeah, man. I, you know what's crazy about just changes in general in the business and and all of that. Um, you know this year. I feel like I haven't been into it as much 
as I was in 2017 and 2018, right? Like just in general, like, you know, we worked a lot together in 2018, you and I did. Yep. And at the beginning of 2019, we went to, you know, the conference in, in Vegas. You saw me pretty much become teary eyed when we were, uh, where were we? We were in Salt Lake City. When I yeah, found, we yeah. yeah, when I found out my eBay was banned, right? Like you were with me on that, um, finding finding that out. You know, you were reassuring me and all that. But after that happened, I mean, you can definitely tell that, you know, I haven't been into the whole e-commerce side of things um, for a while, right? Like I, I was successful yeah. with poker this year and I have been traveling a lot and it's it's been hard to kind of work on things together. Um, I mean, you can attest for all that, right? Like you, you've seen yeah. it firsthand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody like I understand when uh, you, you start doing well in something, you kind of want to ride the train out and stuff. But ultimately, it's for me, especially when I'm putting a lot of work into something or there's a lot of potential. You want to make sure that like like long uh, longevity or whatever it is is like um, like poker can be you you know you, you can do really well, and then sometimes you know you can go on a dry streak. Uh, I'm not saying you can. I mean, typically. Um, and you've done really well over, over the course of this year. I mean, so, I mean, definitely, you know, mad props, but like, it's just, uh, for e-commerce, there's a lot of things that, um, from the, from a time perspective and just a scaling perspective and outsourcing and being able to put things together. Uh, that's, well, that's, that's key what you're saying right now, outsourcing. Cause I was going to say with poker, there's no passive income. You've got to travel to these places. Yeah. You've got to spend the time. You've got to put in the work and that's the only way you can make money. I don't make money from being good at poker just sitting in my chair right now. You know what I mean? Like doing this podcast right now, I'm not making anything unless I travel to those tournaments. And that takes time away from everything else that could be passive. Right. And I mean, you've got to obviously look at it from that perspective. And that's very important. Like time is so valuable. So it's like if you can't – there's there's mo so many things where I can make money right now all day every day like easily. And I mean like – thousands a day like in, in like so many different areas and it's just like well what what do I do like how do I set it up what, well, where do I go what, what's the what's, well, you know what, what's the most important thing what's going to take the, 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 the least amount of time least amount of stress you know um, and you know be able to have some type of long longevity with it and um, what's going to what, what is that going to be now I'm not just sitting there trying to oh, like like say hey I just want to make the most money because there are there are things that it's like okay well yes I do want to make the most money but what's what, what's going to be something where I'm putting time in it. I'm putting effort. I'm, I'm what's going to be something that's kind of giving back as well, like simultaneously. Like I, I, there, I do like to have a uh, something where it's like it, it, it's it, there's a point or there's a like um, I don't know. I mean, like you don't just like to like do certain things like every single day where it just doesn't give you a, a sense of joy, fulfillment, or a sense of completion or something. I, I, I want something where it's like okay, I help somebody, or I improve somebody else's life, or I save somebody else's business. Or maybe something in that sense, like yeah, like being able to take some of my experiences, and I have tons of experiences. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely the take, taking a lot of those experience. So, I mean, you're you're and, talking about your suspension service. I feel I feel like right now. Like, well, I mean, like there's, there's multiple things. I mean, being able to, I mean, you can say like sales tax stuff. I mean, there's like just people don't know what what's what's going on with that. Like I know more, and I'm, I mean, I mean, I hate to say it like this, but I know more than like uh, the average CPA. When it comes to sales tax, all right, it's ridiculous. And I I'm. Like I do too. I get letters. You know, we talk about from states. We talk about this, and we know you know you know too. Yeah. You know too. So I mean, I feel like me, me, you. I mean, Mitch. Like I mean, like like we literally are like some of the like the only people that I mean know what's going on. And at the end of the day, it's like I don't, it's it's crazy. I'm like these nobody knows what's actually going on. I feel like every single day I'm like finding some guy that's like I'm thinking. Oh, this guy is big time, and then all, all of a sudden he doesn't. He has no idea what's going on with sales tax. I'm like, what? Like he's like, oh, I just thought that you know Amazon took care of it or loose. It's like, yes, Amazon's taking care of a lot of stuff, but I mean, are you selling on other platforms? eBay, or, I mean, eBay is as well. They're trying to like add more stuff in there, but yeah, like I shopping. eBay, eBay has I think 35 states right now, so eBay is definitely getting on the same train as as Amazon in terms of uh, being a marketplace collector. But that's. That's because all these states are now rule. They have these rules and they've created these laws that force these marketplace collectors. Before they didn't want anything to do with it, but now that the laws are going into place, um, all of these other states are, you know, doing it. It's funny. Uh, actually, I got a letter from Kentucky today, right? 
um, and I looked it up. Kentucky started being a uh, an Amazon marketplace state. Like you know how they they've come into like existence over time, right? Like over the past year, it seems like every month or so there's a new state that comes on board with this whole thing. Um, Kentucky started seven one two thousand nineteen, so July first two thousand nineteen, right? So it's been almost four months. I got a letter from Kentucky today saying that all of these states, or I mean all of these months that I haven't um, filed, you know, since that, that July date, uh, they're saying I owe money. And that's because of the fact that they still want you to file like a zero file. Like it's very annoying. Like even though you have a state license and Amazon is collecting, you still have to go file and tell them how much sales you had and then tell them that there's a marketplace that is doing the whole sales process for you. Like, you, you right. know what I mean? Like, it's very frustrating that even though you're not paying anything in sales tax and someone else is doing it for you, essentially, you still have to report a number. And, like, you have, basically, I, I mean, I, I'm just going to put tax jar on it, do an auto file, file zero every month, and pay tax jar the $25, which is, is annoying. But, yeah. Sales tax is, is a huge bitch. Like, I hate sales tax with a passion, but I know it because of the fact I've had to deal with it. And I've had to deal with, I've had, I probably had to deal with like 15 states at this point trying to come after me for collecting money. I don't know. Do you get letters? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, people don't understand, like, like when you're doing, when you're doing high volume, like, that was probably the most frustrating thing on the planet that slowed me and just, it's, it's like you, you felt paralyzed for a long time because you're like, you're doing high volume. So, just so, just so everybody's clear, when you do a, a lot more volume, you automatically have economic nexus everywhere. Like, I mean, everywhere. Like, you have them in all the states you can possibly have them. So you're like, oh, I'm doing a lot of volume. It's like, yes, but then boom, it's an instant liability because now you you have you're responsible. And like those states, and it, it's, a lot of people don't know this either, but like Amazon was giving access for, to to those states. Uh, Amazon will tell you this, like they would give access They're, to those yeah, your records, right? Your sales records. Yeah, your records. So they actually would know that. So they would see that. And I mean, that uh, people would be like, oh, they're never going to catch you. It's just like, I mean, uh, people got, I already know people like who have literally gotten audited and money taken for multiple states, California, Florida, Tennessee. Um, and they'll just go right in your bank. So I mean, like, I don't, I, I don't understand like why people are like, oh, it'll, it'll never happen. I'm like, yeah, it will. I mean, like, it's, I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it all. So I mean, yes, they will. Uh, but you know it, that was probably the, like for me personally, and you know a lot of other people. Um, it's just it's so paralyzing when you're like trying to like just get all of your like when when's, when do I need it? Like when or, like when do I have to ha have the license? And then it's just like did I get it? Like like when was the actual official date that I had to have it? Which we kind of went over that. We kind of went over all of that, but it was just really frustrating trying to like you know backpedal on some states and it was like did we get it and then it's like all right well okay are we exempt and then it's like we're exempt here and it's like some of the states were i don't know there there was a lot of little extra things that i was like not aware of or i didn't understand and i had to like teach myself all that stuff uh no cpas no cpas except for jack small which i do recommend on the course and stuff he actually knew what was going on um and I, he he definitely helped out a lot um well yeah no, no these cpas they're definitely not trained in sales tax at all like, yeah, I had to go through a company called Cherry Becker to get my sales tax license, which they specialize in, you know, sales and use tax. And really, I could have done it on my own, but I feel like sometimes it's just worth paying people, you know, to avoid a headache, which is what I did with that company. Uh, so they were the ones that got me all the licenses and stuff. But then after you have the licenses, you know, these states expect you to, to make sure, or they expect you to file um, every month, even if Amazon's collecting. And that, that was a big problem with Washington at one point. Washington was threatening me so hard. And really, Amazon's been collecting sales tax from Washington since the day I started dropshipping. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But ultimately, like, yeah, so sales tax is good. I mean, when we, you know, there's, there's moving, moving right along. I mean, it, it is nice now. Uh, to have Amazon you know, taking care of a lot of sales tax stuff, but you still obviously have to be have the sales tax licenses to, to file zero. You plan on sh uh, yeah, selling on Shopify, okay? You know, and I mean, there's there's you still need the licenses, and, and I mean that's just something that yeah. uh, people don't like really. I don't know. Let's move on from uh, from sales tax. So retail yeah. arbitrage. All right, what are your thoughts right now on retail? I know you're not a fan. I know you'd rather do the wholesale and PL. Yeah. Label. 
But yeah, yeah. What I mean, are your thoughts on retail? It's still a viable business model, is it not? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, like if if you saw the last part, if anybody got the course or whatever, uh, the last part I say specifically, I'm like, you cannot do, you cannot do like um, you know retail arbitrage if you if you're not doing wholesale um, as well. So but that's drop, just to protect yeah. yourself. Just to protect yourself. Suppliers. So like, uh, we're we're launching a service basically. Like I mean, I just I, it, it's it's gotten to this point where because we were doing the suspension service, but we're actually doing another service where it basically is like we're gonna set set that per, any person up. For like wholesale accounts, you're gonna get like all the statements of authorization that we we've gotten accounts back with. So you're just gonna be all completely set up, and um, and then you'll also have some suppliers that you know you might be able to use um, and actually you know, be able to profit with um, as well. But you'll have kind of a, a blueprint of what you what you're gonna to need to do and and what it's gonna look like, and then that that'll at least give you um, enough to say okay, it can be private. It can you know private label and and wholesale suppliers, but like it just gives you enough to where you're like, all right, these are good. This is where I, where you know where I can start from, and I have all the stuff that I need um, to not get if I do get suspended, whatever. But if you know if, if Amazon's ever asking for things because you get you, you do get those 17 day notices and stuff where they want to see invoices, statements of authorization, or they, they want to see that, and then you have like you know those kind of on deck. All right, it's great. Like you're you're good to go. And also, by the way, I do want to recommend, and I say this all the time. I've been like, I'm actually doing a video on this, but uh, Well Dash Insurance, uh, I, I, we recommend this for everybody. All the accounts that we have gotten back, we automatically re recommend this um, uh, for for anybody that's doing either re you know retail arbitrage, wholesale, uh, private label, or a combination of all three. Um, the policy will actually cover your Amazon account for all all three models. So I mean, it is ridiculous. So I mean, like. Um, I, everybody's always like, ah, I don't ever, I don't want to do anything. I don't even want to do sell on Amazon anymore because there's so many risks. Well, with that policy, I mean, that covers you for 30 days, and um, it, it's it, 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 it's 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 ridiculously ridiculously cheap for what you're actually getting. The the most it costs is like 280. Don't quote me, but like around 280 dollars a month, but it's covering you up to 10 thousand dollars a day, 300 thousand dollars for the month. Um, if you ever get suspended, and you know your payroll, your you know business expenses, you know just you know whatever, so whatever. This thing will give you like a loan against your balance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, it's not a loan. I mean, they they pay you, and they also give you. They also give you, uh, and we honor this now. So they also give you uh, a twelve hundred fifty dollar credit for any appeal service that you um, that you that you want. So uh, we have a kind of kind of because of like a bulk discount. We're gonna honor that credit, so it's just like basically you're just getting an appeal service for free. We'll work on it. We'll work on your account. All you gotta do is you know. Yeah, what's, yeah. The, what's the uh, what's the address? Is it um, gotsuspended.com? Uh, no. So right now uh, we're just I, I'm trying to get the the, the new portal out um, and, and and switch it over. We had a uh, like on my actual website, official Megan bro, and we have another website, uh, amzassassins.com. So the, if, if someone wants to use your appeal service, how should they contact you? Um, yeah, so you can contact me. Um, well, actually, if you want to just contact me on, on Facebook or Skype, um, my Skype is probably where I'm always at, Matt Gambrell, 23. Um, but uh, yeah, I can right right now as we speak. I, I you're gonna get so many random people hitting you up now just for yeah. Amazon advice. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm not I'm not. We were doing the consulting earlier. Um, I'm not. I I kind of like cut that off a little bit because it was taking up a little too much time uh, during my day. But yeah, it's you. You, do, you were doing consulting too for a while, right? You know the thing with consulting is, I mean, it's great. You get to help a lot of people, but at the same time, um, I mean, I'm a really nice person when it comes to uh, once I get. I guess once I get connected to somebody, I like feel an obligation to help them. Yeah, that makes sense. And I feel like you're kind of the same way. You're the same type of person where once they pay you for like an hour and you help them on one thing and you're like, oh, well, you know, hit me up if you have any questions. Then it's like they'll hit you up constantly and you don't want to be like, sorry, man, I can't talk to you anymore unless you pay me. You know what I mean? Like because you've already made that connection. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I mean, I most of the calls always went over. Um, actually, they all did pretty much, and I mean, like, I would definitely try to, you know, provide as many resources as possible. And you have to uh, realize, like, your time is money, and that is a hard concept when you're like a really nice person doing consulting online with somebody. Right. I mean, like, that's one of the things. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'll go out, and I will literally go out, and I'll be at like, you know, uh, you know, buy a new shop or just a random place, 
and someone will be like, yeah, I saw this video, and they just like they just. I feel like I just get trapped. I'm like in a in a place. I'm like, oh crap! Now I'm 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 stuck. I I can't get out of here. And I was like, I'm no offense. I'm just like sometimes that like that happen. And I I want to help people, but like it's like sometimes people are just like drilling me with questions and stuff. I'm like, oh man, yeah, this is man. Like that was the hardest thing is like when I first started having success and you know my friend group and all that heard about it. Um, one of the harder things was a lot of people coming up and asking me, hey man, how do I get started? How do I do this? I'm like trying to help them get started. But like I knew that it took a certain level of consistency and stuff that most people don't have. So even though you're trying to help them, it's like, uh, I know I'm helping you, but I know it's probably not going to work out anyway. And it's just like, am I wasting my time? Well, I, I don't understand why or where it's like people put in a lot of effort into like, I don't know, just like college and stuff. It's like, I know you I know people have to study for those tests. I mean, exams and stuff. I mean, like, I, I just don't get it. Like, you're going to put in four years or two years or whatever your actual thing is, and then you can't even put in like two months or uh, three, six months. and, and just and, grinding and, nonstop. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I've that. never understood that. That's the one thing I've never really got. And it's like, oh, it's just, you know, this, there's no hope in this. It's like, you, you put... Why did you, you 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 were paying? Remember, you're paying all this money for college, and and ultimately to not actually have a business. It's like you're not building a business for like those four years. You're paying for it, and and you're you're getting this general education, which you know some of it can definitely help. I'm not saying anything like you, some of it can definitely help, but if if you're if you're trying to be a business owner, um, yeah, I mean it's it's definitely. It doesn't. It's it's outdated information. That's just my opinion. It's outdated information. Yeah. It can't really be applied for what you really want. And so that's why it's like there's a there are values in a lot of different types of things. Whether it's you know uh, courses, con, um, uh, consulting, um, uh, one on one stuff. I mean there are, there is value. Um, it's just the, the, those people also have to be willing to put in the work and and the and the consistency consistency as well. I mean I have to put in the consistency as what up for my business. But they do too. I mean, but I'm willing to obviously. I mean, when I, if I if I'm not putting in my, my consistency, I notice. So that's why I mean I'm making changes. Back to what I was saying earlier, I guess with, you know, my whole uh, my whole 2019 and kind of what I've been doing with everything uh, or lack of doing, I guess. Um, it's been interesting. Like I've really only started working in the past month. I mean, I I've really really took a big break and. I was showing you even, you know, my YouTube channel and I was so passionate about teaching people and so passionate about my business and all of that. And then all of a sudden everything dropped off and now I'm just getting back into it. And it is so, it's, it's crazy, man. Like, you know, you grind and grind and grind and work on something and you just kind of like, sorry, I got a, sorry for the noise in the background. Um, I, when it's recording, you'll be able to hear it, but I'm not sure if you can hear it, Matt, I'm getting Skype messages. Anyway, what I was saying is like I'm feeling like I'm starting all over again at that point and it is hard. Like when you when you take time off of a business for as long as I have, you know, like you know my story. I literally like you you live my story with me. You you saw everything. Yeah. I started and 6 months later I was going full time on this, right? So yeah. having like a 6 7 month break of of like really really working on my store on a daily basis and working with my employees on a daily basis and like really tailoring my strategies and all of that to what's current I'm st I I essentially started over a month ago and it really sucked um that's even why I did the video like on YouTube where I was like I quit dropshipping cuz at a at the time I was like you know it's easier just to do FBA and get that going rather than restart this whole thing of dropshipping again so I do feel for people who are just starting now because it is a grind. And that's even with a team in place already. You know what I mean? Like I didn't have a team in place or anything like that when I started. I had to hire right. all that. And then, you know, you helped me with my Amazon team, obviously. But my eBay team and the first six months of me doing the business, that was all eBay. I didn't have any Amazon going when I quit my job. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's a grind. It is a freaking grind. Here's something, here's something that I want to say, and I mean, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but like basically like it's a grind. Like it's always it, – retail doing retail arbitrage, this is the one thing I've always hated about it. Like yes, it was great to have the cash flow, the quick money, and all that stuff, okay? And and by the way, I still like – well, I'm not going to say uh, you know here publicly because I'm sure you know Amazon's watching this video so or this podcast. So. But, you know, I mean I, I may still be doing it. I'm not sure. Uh, I, 
I'm just going to say that in, uh, you know, code code words. But, <laughs> but no, um, it's the biggest frustration with re retail arbitrage is the fact that um, the, the longevity of it. Like, you put in a lot of work into to making a strategy, making a software, you know, make, you know building a team. And then, and then all, all ultimately it's like, all right, so, <laughs> like, it, you just don't have, like, that, like, brand attached to it. And so it's just, like, it, it's frustrating where you put in all that work on the front end, and you don't get any back end, like, okay, can I sell it, or can I do this, or can I do that? It's like I don't have that, like, you know, uh, that, 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 that something that I can just build, 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 build. Uh, so that's one of the things that, uh, that I've always said. Like, just it, it is frustrating worth thinking back. It's, it's definitely it's it's quick money and it's a way out of a current situation where, yes. like, if you need money now, then dropshipping is a great thing. But if you need money for the next five years, no, you need to you need to dropship to start and then put that money into something. And like that was the concept I missed when I started. Is like I didn't realize how important it was to build these other, you know, uh, streams of income. But essentially I will say this, right? The best part of drop shipping for me is the fact that I've been able to build a YouTube audience as well as live without having to be in a real desk job. Like, but the biggest part for me is my YouTube audience, the course I sold, um, all the affiliate stuff on the side. That's been the most fun for me about this whole drop shipping business, which I know is like people are going to be like, oh, well, he only drop ships to sell people stuff. That's not true at all. That's not the majority of my income, but that's the most fun part of my income. And I guarantee you, everyone who is a very successful drop shipper and has a YouTube channel, they'll tell you the same thing. So that's been like the best part of the business for me is not the, not the quick money of like drop shipping. But like being able to build a business outside of, of drop shipping with a uh, a personal brand, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I was I mean I was telling you with like as you were kind of getting into it to it, um, it's just it's doing like because everybody's like you know Amazon is like this or I, I just wish I you know doing Shopify or whatever and like Amazon is like amazing when you're like actually like getting into private label because it's like if you're a creative person because you can do so much with it like you can just like. Um, I mean, like the the strategies are more creative. It's not just like I mean, I'm not just piggybacking off all these listings yeah. and like just like that's it. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Okay, I guess that's that's what I'm trying to say is like the creativity side of things. Like if you're an entrepreneur, you like being creative and innovative, right? Like that's part of being an entrepreneur. But you don't really get to do that in drop shipping, to be honest. It's, it's it takes pretty, the fun out of everything. Absolutely, like it's, yeah, it's a pretty proven model within itself, right? Like. You list some products that are listed on other sites that you know are selling well on on these, you know, Amazon and eBay, and you hire employees to take over your task, and you just oversee operations. Like that's pretty much it. You don't really do anything different, or like, there's no innovation. Like there's nothing that you could do. I know you're. I know you've been doing this for a long time, but there's nothing that you can like be a wizard at right now in drop in terms of retail drop shipping. Like there's just not. Yeah, I mean, like, the, I've said this for, for forever, though. So for the people that are, like, you know, still doing retail arbitrage, I mean, you cannot – I mean, there's people that come out of the, out of the woodworks or they're, you know, come out of, out of nowhere and they're like, oh, you know, retail arbitrage, I mean, I can go out and get all these insane margins and or whatever. That's and so, like, such bullshit. There's not insane margins in retail dropshipping. The only way you can get margins, like – Consistent, consistently, or whatever. I mean, you, you, you can't. You're not going to find them. You're, you, you're literally creating them. And if you're creating them, yeah. um, you're, you know, that's it, oh my god, that's perfect. You're creating them. It's so true. Yeah. So you have to create them in order to to have a margin. But then again, you know, it, it, let's just say you're doing a bundle, two pack, three pack, whatever. You got to be careful on uh, variation misuse, like because some people will be like, oh, I'm going to piggyback off of this, you know, really good item. Or whatever, and it's like, all right, well, what are you, you going to do? And create a variation, you know, uh, and then it's like, uh, so like on one on a particular item that was like, I don't know, you're going to like create if the if the color was wasn't created, like if the color wasn't created, then you're good. But like, I mean, if you start doing it like like these bundles, like um, a, a, a red bundle for this phone case or something like that, or something weird, like Amazon really takes that seriously, and you can get suspended for it, you know, pretty quickly. So I mean, and we get people like that that have to have it like actually in the queue for. Like suspensions and stuff, so you gotta be very careful. Uh, so not even well, what I what I uh, what first came to my mind when you said creating too. Not necessarily. Yes, I've seen a lot of sellers that have the bundles and they're doing very well. Obviously, especially 
The thing I've seen lately, the big trend is the Home Depot items that are less than $45. And in order to get like a $45 cart, uh, or in order to get free, sh free shipping, you got to get a $45 cart. So if they have like, you know, a $12 item, they'll put four of them together and make a bundle or whatever and have their own like listing or just lots of examples of that type of thing, right? Like two $25 items, whatever. They'll have a bundle because gift cards are so are so prevalent right now for Home Depot. They're just, you can find discounted gift cards on Card Bazaar every single day, unlike Walmart yeah. that's super saturated. But when you first said created, I was more thinking back in margin, like the gift cards, like using the different cashback sites, um, you know, finding ways to to bundle those those um, cashback sites, discounted gift cards, and credit card cashback all together, which is what I've been focusing on lately. And I know I told you this, where I was able to find a gift card website where I could get three percent when I bought in rewards, and then two percent for my credit card. So now essentially I have a five percent discount. Like I created yeah. that margin, right? Like by doing, by finding yeah. that site and using my rewards and all that and stacking stuff. So not only do I have that 5% cash back for the credit card and the gift card site, but now I have also a 3% uh, rewards from top cash back on average. And so now I have an, I created an 8% margin, you know, just on the back end of stuff. Right. And I mean, that's not, that's, yeah, obviously that's not what I was talking about, but I mean, since we, since we're going there and we're going to, you know, bring up gift cards and all these stacking things, you know, the gift card, there, there's always somebody, <laughs> it drives me nuts because there's like, there's so many ways to like, you know, scheme, scam, and do things. I'm not saying using gift cards is a scam. I'm just saying that there are a lot of very um, sketch things that are, people are doing with retail overcharge now. And it's like, there's a lot, yeah, well, <laughs> Getting like forty or fifty or sixty percent set off gift card, yeah. it's, it's a little. It's a. It's uh. Yeah. Like how I both know people that are getting forty percent off Amazon. You know, using Paxful, and it's like, damn. Like, how do you feel? I mean, more power to you that you're doing that. A and B, like, but how do you feel knowing that that has to be a hundred percent a scam? Like, there's no way anyone's selling an Amazon gift card at forty percent off. And it'd be a legit gift card. Like there's just there's just zero chance. Right. I mean, I just I don't like to support you know any any uh, uh, criminal activity or anything like that. So I mean, that's the thing. But I mean, like ultimately, it's always been a, a huge temptation. I can see how it would be. It's a huge temptation for a lot of people. It, it really is. Like if you look at drop shipping as a get rich quick scheme, like using those gift cards, dude, you can get rich so quick. Like, yeah, I want you to think about it. Think about it. Think about it. If, if, if everybody rips retail arbitrage, I just want—I just want to say this really quickly. Like, 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 I can easily, easily, easily in two seconds, like, I mean, always do a million, you know, two million, three million a month in sales. I'll, like, like, I'll sign on a dotted line any day of the week. Like, I can do that right now. And think about it. Think about this. If I can get 30, 40 percent gift cards, and the banks aren't going to shut me down. I, FBI is not coming. You know, nobody's nobody's going to say nothing. Dude, I'm freaking crushing it. Like, boom, they're like I'm going to literally crush it. You're like, what? What's up? If if I could get twenty percent off gift cards right now, I'd make a million dollars a year easily. Easily. Which I know there's people out there that are getting twenty percent off gift cards, which is nuts. Yeah. I mean, oh no, there's people doing this like right now that are making millions. I'm just saying yeah. I you gotta ask your you you gotta ask yourself, I mean, like, is is that is that what you wanna do? I mean it, it's, it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. Risk risk reward. I don't want to go to a jail cell. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying you would necessarily go to a jail cell. Um, I mean, there could be a, 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 a it could be white collar crime, which could be in, could, which could result into a, a penalty or something like that, where you you would have to pay a certain amount. Yeah, yeah. You might have to surrender all that profit or something like that in, in order to not go to jail. Yeah. Yeah, like, like, oh, you know, you got to give us all the money you made as far as profit from those gift cards back, and then you don't. Have to pay. It's like, dude, what? Like, I know that. Like, I feel like there could be some like conspiracy money laundering type stuff going on, and like it could it could be it could be bad. It could go on for a while, and I feel like you could get effed pretty hard on it. But yeah, I'm not saying that like, and you know what? Actually, I know people that have looked into it pretty hard, and uh, just because of the fact that they're using these gift cards for Amazon, and to be honest, they've said that they're they think they're they're good, like just because of the fact they're buying them from a marketplace. Um, it's the person that creates the gift card or originally steals it is the one who actually is, you know, effed. Everyone else is just a victim. The person that has the gift card is a victim. The person that had their identity stolen or credit card stolen, they're a victim. 
Um, really, it's just the person that created the whole, you know, the whole, the gift card in the first place that's the real problem. Right, and there's cleaning scams. I mean, they're like someone can take that gift card, um, transition into like a prepaid debit card, then go ahead and and then and then like because like a lot of people on Passable will ask for receipts and stuff like that. And 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 in theory, <laughs> uh, then they can like actually take the the prepaid debit, debit cards, then buy the gift cards, and in store have the receipts, then show them, and then it's like super super clean, and then it's like yeah, here they are, and then there's the receipts, and it's like yeah yeah yeah, and it's like all right, well yeah, it's just money laundering. Like, yeah, it's, it's it's just it's just yeah, pretty much just isolated or you know like quarantine money laundering where you, you you're cutting off the yeah paper trail. Yeah, so for sure, for sure, but. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, let me just, like, because uh, we were originally talking about, like, creating listings, and we got off on gift cards, and I didn't want to go oh, too yeah. far. yeah, we got on a back-end margin tangent. But with wholesale, it makes a lot of sense creating your own listings, um, you know, doing bundles, like, like well, multiple quantity. It's a lot, it makes a lot of sense, and a lot of brands don't know anything at all. Like, they don't know anything. You see, like, if you're doing inventory source or you're going through like and trying to sign up with distributors or you know manufacturers and brands I mean like look at the brands like they don't know anything like they have one picture one bullet point like you know and nothing and it's like it's pathetic and so being able to come in and spoof that up you know being able to try maybe get a contract with that brand or you know whatever first of all to avoid IP complaints okay so that's a very important thing you don't want to have obviously have that issue so be doing wholesale, trying and making sure that you, the brand knows you're selling Amazon. That's important. Uh, safeguarding yourself, but like if you can actually like like alter the listings, add pictures, and maybe do some other stuff. Um, that's that's you're you're definitely going to be able to get those listings to you know sell more, sell for more, like like higher margins and stuff. Uh, but I mean, if you're doing like actual bundles too, I mean, yeah, it's this the sky's the limit. It's just the main thing when you're actually really doing getting into wholesale hard is Making sure that you know you're you're allowed to sell that product on Amazon. Um, I know that one thing that like I have a couple friends that actually make like uh, like a million a year off of selling Nike. There was something like an article where Nike's Nike kind of, stopping Amazon. Are they not going to be selling on Amazon anymore? Yeah, they're splitting away from from uh, from Amazon. And I'm approved, obviously, to sell on uh, Nike and stuff, or to sell Nike on Amazon. Um, that does not mean though that you're approved. From Nike to sell on Amazon, I I, I want to be clear on that. Everybody always thinks if, if if Amazon approves you, then that's like the green light to be like, oh, I'm not going to get an IP complaint. That does not mean that. Like mm -hmm. it's actually Nike. You know, when we were trying to you know sell resell, it's like they they were requiring a storefront, which I understand a lot of people have a storefront just for a face. It's like, oh, I just want to have a storefront, so I'm allowed to you know be a reseller of the of this really big brand, and then then they use that to just kind of like you know get in with them, and then from there, yeah. But if Nike, if Nike were to open things up and and, and actually start to yeah let, let allow people to to, to resell, that'd be super cool. But that 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 was a <laughs> people that sell sell Nike. I mean FBA or whatever. Um, they I know some people are just crushing that. So only Nike, absolutely ridiculous. But um, well, you yeah, know, I mean we have a we have a uh, Nike outlet in Concord Mills and. You go there, and I'm sure you can go through there and scan a bunch of barcodes and find some profitable profitable shoes to sell. But that's not something yeah. I'm interested in doing, to be honest. I don't want to do. I don't want to do anything like that. Like those people that sell like Nike shoes, probably are going in, you know, every day to different places and going out to closeouts and stuff like that, and buying out all buying out the whole like the whole store and you know whatever. I don't want to do that. Well, ultimately, you got to think about that. Like, hey, I can make this. Now, this is a perfect example. I'm glad we were actually talking about this. Ultimately, you can be like, yeah, I can make five hundred. I can make a thousand dollars right now doing that. And it's like, all right, well, that's great. But what did what did it cost? You? Think about that. What did it cost you? What did it cost me to do that? Can I do that every day? Well, it's I don't want to passive at all. Like, it's unless you hire people to go out and buy the shoes for you and ship them into Amazon for you and all that. I mean, that's just not passive income. At right. All. So, I mean, you got to choose your battles. Choose your like and be. Be efficient. So I mean, if, if there's something you can make money with, that's cool. Like I can go to Goodwill every Saturday morning. As soon as they, as soon as they load it up, I mean, Gary Vee always talks about it, but I, I did, I used to do it too. I mean, just going in, grabbing stuff from Goodwill, listing it on eBay, maybe doing auctions or whatever. I mean, I, what, whatever, and then you know, trying to get it to sell. I mean, it, it's just like that's cool, but it's like it does take time to do the listings. Um, if you have a way to just make things efficient, if you're going to sell again and again and again, get 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 it to rank. 
you know, then you're good to go. I mean, it's, 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 um, yeah. For sure. For sure. But private label, private label, I mean, did you want to talk about that? I mean, we don't have to. Yeah, no, dude, let's, let's get into it. I'm actually really excited about private label right now, as you know, because of the fact I have a product coming out. So yeah, we can talk a little bit about it. I mean, where do you want to start? You want me to just talk, to talk about what I'm doing and what I, what I went through today and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hear where you're, you're at. And I mean, I'll obviously kind of give you some, some, some stuff. Yeah, that works. so, uh, I got, um. As you know, I've been working on you know sourcing this this private label product. It's in the baby category. Don't want to say what the product is, but uh, pretty excited about it. And it sells really well on Amazon. I found this product, Matt, um, using Jungle Scout, and basically I found a bunch of listings that had like three three and a half star reviews. Like literally all of them were like three star to three and a half star reviews. And there were a lot of complaints about the product, and all of them were pretty much the same complaint. And the reason you know people were giving a, a bad score to these products uh, was all for the same reason. So I went to the factory. Um, I went to three different factories and asked them, you know, uh, can you make this modification? Um, can you make this this product this color? And what price can you do it at, etc. And like I ultimately found one that has a really good reputation on Alibaba. Um, you know, they have their, their, uh, gold supplier and their trade assurance and all of that. So yeah, it's a really good supplier. Uh, ultimately I'm paying seven, seven dollars and 50 cents a unit, uh, trying to work out right now my freight costs and all of that, but I'm ordering a thousand units and I actually just put the deposit down today for 30% of the product. So I paid 30% of the manufacturing cost right now today. And then when the production is done, in order for them to ship it out, I got to pay the additional 70%. So I, I put down like something like $2,300 or something like that today on Alibaba. So I'm all, I'm, I'm like fully committed at this point because now that I put down 2,300, I feel like I just, there's no way I'm going to lose anywhere near, near that on this product, even if things go wrong. So now I'm all in, like, I'm just going to put the rest of the money. I in total, it's going to be like, Anywhere from twelve to fourteen, depending on what I can get the shipping cost down. But yeah, I'm really excited about it because it. I mean, that's a big investment. Yep. A couple of things I want to say right now for right off the back. So you need like you need to make sure that um, we talked about this. You need to make sure you're getting your uh, your trademark um, immediately. Yes. Now, yes. trademarks only matter. Just so we're clear on this, trademarks only matter to get into the brand registry. That's only yeah. why. We're, I mean. Yeah. Because it kind of doesn't really matter if you're just like on Shopify only. I mean, not really. Like, it's it's really just like because you don't want someone to come in on your Amazon listing that you've done all this work trying to launch or trying to get to rank and you know all this stuff. Well, what I was going to ask you about actually, and this is good, we brought this up. Um, there's two different things I want to talk about with trademark, and like, yes, I want to do the brand registry and all that, so I can't get hijacked. But with the trademark, right? I have a company name, and then I have a product name for this product. So the company name. Ultimately, and you know my company name, I've showed you the website and all that. Ultimately, I want that company name to be trademarked uh, and the logo and all that so that I can create other products off of this, you know, one product, right? Like build a brand essentially, which is what the whole goal is on Amazon. But this one product, I want to get trademarked as well, the name. So I'm naming the product something, but I'm also naming my company something. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah. So you it's basically like, you know, you like you can trademark and they actually when you speak to like let's just say you're like talking with a representative at LegalZoom or Trademark Engine or wherever you wherever you're getting it from, like they'll actually say like, you know, you're gonna trademark every like each thing. It's like a parent child like trademark or whatever. So you have the main one, so what if it whatever whatever your brand name is, and then like you're doing like um something products and then it's like something um something like uh cosmetics, something um, kitchen like beauty sensation or something. Your name, your company name is beauty sensation, and then you could call the the lipstick like something like uh, lip tastic lipstick, right? Like you're 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 trademarking the company and you're trademarking the lip tastic lipstick, like so stupid like that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what you're talking about with the parent child relationship in terms of. Trademark the company, trademark the product name, and that's what I'm doing too. Right thing has to be trademarks, but I'm just I, and and it needs to be like you know the category that you're trademarking it in. Like what what are you selling? So yeah, each thing actually needs to be trademarked. But it's kind of like yeah, it's um and they do this all the time. It'll it'll be like you got your main one and then you, and then for every additional one that's kind of like uh, attached to that, it's you're, you're you're trademarking that as well. But yeah. Uh, yeah, when you go in the brand register, you're getting the main the main one in there, and then then yeah, it's. 
Um, obviously, it gives you way, way, way more like you know, uh, just like just sales volume in general. But like you know, you're you're getting brand awareness, um, and and there's a lot of different things that you know just give let me. You so let me let me ask you a question about um, about brand name and then your seller name, right? So. Like you know, I have a I have a seller name right now that's very generic because we've been doing drop shipping. Uh, it's not specific to any category or niche or anything like that. It's just a very general name that I have in my store. But I'm trying to create you know baby products, right? And I have a name for my baby products. How does that work when I create the listing? I know it's gonna say like, you know. It's gonna say my my Amazon seller name. I'm trying my hardest not to say these names right now. That's why I'm taking. Yeah, just make up a name. We can just make up like whatever. But I mean, I, yeah, because I don't want to give away my store names. All right, so I'll just call my store Store X, right? Like, so I have Store X, and I have a brand called Baby X. Um, how does that work? Where Store X and Baby X, like, what is it gonna show up on as Am in Amazon? You know what I mean? Like, if I have the brand Baby X, but yet my store is store x and it's sold by store x yet the products baby x like you know what i'm saying like i know it's very confusing but how does that how does that actually work with amazon if i want to create a brand under my seller account i mean yeah like basically like you can you can create like um you can have multiple brands within the same same dash like i mean i have multiple shopify stores connected to like one amazon account like when i did like it's so it's just that's Basically, like, um, if you're just talking about, like, the brand itself, um, like, if you're doing different ones, are you planning on doing different brands, like, other yeah, than of just... of course. I don't want to stay in one niche, like, forever, you know what I mean? Like, I, I plan on launching in the baby niche and, like, maybe trying to find some products that can go along with it, but, of course, you're going to need to branch out and create other, you know, other brands to be, to be as big as you want to be. Yeah, so this is where you'd actually create another store, and you can. Re and a lot of people think you, oh, I can't have multiple stores. And it's like, yes, you can totally have multiple stores. You have to request to Amazon and, and okay. say, so you're saying for branding purposes, you could have. Two for stores. branding purposes, yes, yes. For, for branding purposes, yes. I mean, it, the one thing I will tell you that, like, this is just my personal opinion. It is better if you're doing like the parent, like child, like trademarks um, within the same Amazon account because you, if you are already in the brand register or the brand registry on Amazon, it's going to save time unless you already. If you already got those in at the same exact time, like you put in the trademarks for both at the same time, um, then 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 you, then you'd be good to go, and you wouldn't have to worry from a time perspective because it's going to take anywhere from four to like ten months to get the trademark officially passed, um, and that's that's the thing that there the, the there is a, like a you know a hack to kind of get it get it a little bit faster, um, but yeah. you got to definitely like it, that's the one thing that's going to hold you back. And if, so uh, you can't put the TM on any of your stuff then until you get, you get that approved because that's actually illegal to put a fake copyright or fake TM on your your wording. So I um no, no no it's not illegal no no it's not illegal it's just common here's the thing it's common law so it's assumed it's common law you don't actually have the trademark like officially until you until it's in, in the um until it's actually like so it's like patent pending you're saying yeah 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 it's 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 just common law basically so. Technically, you can still take that person like uh, to to court. It's just you're not really you don't have as much control. And I mean, you're you, you might you know you I don't know you could lose. I mean, you're not there's 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 there are certain things. If he were to trademark it and had the ability to trademark it or whatever, it, it, there there definitely could be uh, some some friction there. But yeah, it's it's essentially common law. If you can prove that hey, I signed up for this and it, and it was pending at this particular particular moment. I mean, it's it, it's just but it, so it's not illegal. It's just I, I spoke, spoke with multiple guys about that, but it's just, it's just yeah, you don't have uh, complete control of it, and, and, and that's... Yeah, because that's one thing I wanted to do. I wanted to file my my trademark so I could put that TM on my, um, you know, my packaging and make it look, like, way more official. But I was worried. I, I mean, I didn't know how long the process took. Yeah, I mean, I would talk with... Don't, don't, I'm, now, again, I'm not, like, the, I'm not the guy to talk to uh, specifically. I'm just throwing stuff out that I've been told, so I just want to, you know, disclaimer again, but... Uh, or not again, but I always say disclaimer. Talk with a guy from you know Legal Zoom or maybe Trademark Engine or some of those guys and talk, talk to them about your you know trademark and what you want to do on Amazon, um, and and just they'll kind of go over what they feel or what you know what what they what they know is is the right is the right way to go for your um, you know, trademark or copyright or whatever you're doing you know 
if you have, if, or if you're doing a patent or something. Patents are kind of a waste of money, but uh, again, uh, trademarks definitely aren't. Um, it's, it's, you definitely want to be able to have that ability to, um, or that power to sell on Amazon and not have someone just come and cut you out, especially if it's your own supplier, which is happens a lot actually. So, yeah. if you're sourcing from China, now, now this is something for you guys that are doing the the Alibaba um, sourcing. So just FYI, uh, I brought up the the insurance policy for the Amazon insurance policy, but that same company actually has two really important policies that you're going to need if you're doing FBA, um, and you're also you know going to be sourcing from China. So uh, you, anytime you're doing private label, you want to get general liability insurance so that you're covered because there could be if you're doing like something like you know beauty or health, um, anything you're you know you can edibles you can eat not edibles like you know like you know weave I'm talking about anything you can eat, <laughs> but no like yes anything like that can, there could be a liability you don't want to kill somebody or you know get to have someone get sick and then try to sue you, and even though you're like oh you know it's just like it's it's the manufacturer's problem or if it's this this or it's, it's not my problem it's like it, there can definitely be some some repercussions if you don't have general liability insurance uh, I and plan on, I plan on getting uh, general li liability insurance for my product for sure with babies I feel like is a very sensitive area where parents if anything happens to their child you're fucked oh my gosh yeah the child I mean baby beauty uh, you know uh, if you're doing uh, Dude, even pets nowadays if something happens to the person's pet it's basically like their baby you're screwed. Yeah, it, pets and babies are pretty much the same thing these days. So I mean, like it's. It, uh, yeah. yeah. As ridiculous as that sounds, it's true. <laughs> oh, it's super true. Yeah. So I mean, it definitely is. I mean, you know, Kobe's our child. So I mean, it's definitely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, a little <laughs> yeah but um, the next thing you're gonna want to get is uh, also like a. Um, it's called property inventory coverage. So I mean, if you're if you're concerned, maybe maybe you're not. You know, maybe you have kind of like you know. Uh, yeah, you just got money on deck like that. That doesn't matter, and you don't care about money or whatever. I would think you would, but as a business owner, I feel like it's your, you know, <laughs> it's important. Yeah. So having anything to reduce risk, as long as it doesn't eat into your bottom line too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like they have another insurance uh, policy, like like property uh, inventory coverage. So it's like if something were to happen, someone stole your stuff, or there was, I don't know, just something something happened, and you know, uh, like. Like the supplier just robbed you or something like that, which I did. I, I said this on I think a few videos before where like uh, there was this guy that like he he was buying a bunch of stuff from his uh, supplier in China and then he started with like fifty thousand and then it went to hundred and every time he would just be like going all in all of his profits every time all in you know so he got up to two hundred then he got up to five hundred thousand and it was just so much at that point and the supplier was just like oh this is you know now now we're finally here we've reached the point of you know, I can, I can do something. I can. It's, it's actually worth my. You know, uh, it's, 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 it's worth it to just go ahead and you know, uh, take the money and run. So he just took the money. Away. So I mean, that's that. that and now. That that's so brutal. <laughs> but there, there's coverage for that too. I mean, I know that people are like, well, I mean, do you, you know, PayPal or yeah, this or that. For that, I'm gonna hire a hitman in China and go. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot. It's, it's, <laughs> It's bad. So China has just a lot of black hat stuff. I mean, there's black hat stuff everywhere, but like, I mean, and and the, just the thing that sketches me out the most on China is like just there's literally conferences in China that straight up are like Tony Robbins, dude. Like, I mean, it's like that. Like people go to it like it's Tony Robbins, or it's like a Gary Vee conference, and it's like and then you go in like like talking about how to like you know cheat or just do this or. God, so they're like, they're making professional scammers over there, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, uh, you, there could probably be like just like how to do some new new gift card scheme, like basically like whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that they, they would have there. Jeez. Um, and it, it's it's super sketch. I mean, it, it, that that definitely uh, concerns me. Going into business, first two years, I never even knew that was even like you know I had no idea that was even like there. Like now, I'm just like oh, I cannot believe it. I, I literally I cannot even. I, it's ridiculous. So I mean, like that's something that yeah. If you don't know, like just what's what's out there, I mean, now you're like, okay, <laughs> I need all this stuff, or I need to be a cognizant of you know based on my business uh, volume or what I'm uh, going to buy. Let's just say I'm buying, um, well, five, ten thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars worth of inventory. I need to know. I need to make sure I have that policy. Okay, uh, when you're doing private label. It's always important to kind of vet, you know, the like the supplier, vet the item, get the item to rank. You don't have to do FBA right off the bat. Um, some people do, some people, you know, don't. It just depends. But you don't have to. You can kind of just try to get the item to 
to flow a little bit and then put together a strategy of, well, it's like Jared Goff, or is it Jared Goff? It's like drop surfing. That's what it's called. It's like, you're, you, like that was all about, he, he's all about, you know, like getting the product to rank or, you know, getting the campaign to really kick off. And then, and then once, once you, once you get a certain amount of uh, sales and you can kind of see how things are selling every single day, consistency, you put together, putting together a plan of how much inventory to buy every month and then how to scale that. Like, do it, Maybe maybe this month I'm buying five thousand dollars of cover, uh, uh, not coverage, of inventory. But now that the sales have picked up from like ten to uh, to you know, thirty times a day, now I'm now I'm going to buy ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars of, of uh, on hand inventory, and then keep seeing how things you know continue to to uh, to sell. Because you're going to sell stuff more just from doing FBA. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just like it, you you definitely don't want to like pull yourself into a position where it's like too much. Yeah. Forecasting demand and all that is like the biggest, the biggest thing I feel like now that I'm looking at the numbers with FBA. Cause like the longer you can forecast out and kind of understand how your product's doing, um, the cheaper you're going to get for, for, uh, all the shipping and stuff. And like, you know, and the more confident you're going to be with buying more units at a time. So you can get a cheaper price because obviously, you know, economies of scale, things are going to be cheaper in China, the more you buy of them. Um, that's why, you know, if, if I bought, well, yeah, I couldn't, but if I was buying 500 units, for example, at some factory, maybe it would have been $10 a piece, but instead I'm buying a thousand and it's 750 a piece. Now imagine if you could forecast and say, Hey, this, I'm going to get three months worth of supply now and I'm going to order it now and it's going to be ready in a month, whatever I can wait for C shipping and I can get all my costs down as low as possible. Dude, you can kill it. Like you, your margins can be way better than somebody else. Just understanding how much demand there is for your product. Right. And here's one thing I will say on as far as using China as a supplier. Yes, your product might be very cheap, but you definitely want if you're starting to get in, into categories or certain products that definitely need to be quality. You need to really look into that. Like certain certain people don't want to have like China crap. Like they don't want to have anything they can break or anything like that. There are things that it, it literally doesn't matter. So like dollar store stuff. Obviously, the dollar store still crushes it. So, I mean, there's a lot of cheap crap in there, but keep in mind, they still crush it. So, don't sit, you don't have to sit there and be like, oh, China crap sucks. Well, then they're freaking, oh, well, what are they doing? You know, so, like, why are they still doing it? So, they, they, you can totally, you know, crush it with China products. Sure. Um, sure. But, I, I, the product that I got is super high quality. Like, the, the product I ordered off Amazon, that's my, you know, so-and-so competitor, you know, uh, or quote-unquote competitor. Uh, you know that like that product's shitty and like that's why I got the three to five three and a half star reviews that I was talking about. But I ordered a product from China and it's high quality because I asked them to make it a certain way. You know right. what I mean? So you just have to ask for like customizations and really be specific on what you want. And there's somebody in China I feel like that can do it for you for cheaper than they can in the US, which sucks because you know, I'm all about like keeping work in the States, but as an entrepreneur it's so much cheaper to go outside of the states and use that labor instead. Here's the here's actually a little secret though, like because ultimately, yeah, you're right, it is cheaper, but the uh, the U.S. Um, is actually more um, responsive, or that they they like it's more appealing to to the U.S. buyers these days to actually buy U.S. made products. So if you put that like sticker on there, it's like made in the U.S. People are actually willing to pay more. You know, even in China, people. In China, want products made in the U.S. like brands made in the U.S. specifically because it's like better quality. It's crazy. Yeah. So at it, it, that point, that kind of tells you something. It's like this. It's like that's like more like designer stuff and whatnot, though. It is designer stuff, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, it's also like there's so much counterfeit. There's like, like that's another thing, but like they, there is a better like quality does matter. And so like even if it's more expensive, like it like people are willing to pay more in, in general. I was just kind of you know. Oh, yeah. Like, but in the U.S., for sure, people definitely want to have quality. They also want to support the United States. So um, we had a lot of people, and I actually got into a – it was so funny because I, I, I sometimes – when I first started, I, I would talk really, really in-depth with, uh, like, customers, and people would be, like, um, the complaining on, like, the, the product coming from Walmart, and I would call them on me and be like, what's the, what's the issue? Why did you leave a negative feedback or whatever? And I was just like – I, I don't. I hate Walmart, and I was like, why? And then she's like, I just hate how I, like they they just all their stuff is from China, and it's just like it's just terrible, and they're just damaging the economy or whatever. <laughs> and I was like, dang. I mean, like, all right. So I mean, so I, you could definitely. I, and I had multiple people say that same thing, and it's like, all right, well, okay. 
everything you buy on Amazon is from China. Like, literally, I, I guarantee you probably like 95% of products are from China. The, you know, you'd be surprised though. I mean, there's a lot of products that actually are made in the U.S. Like, I, I didn't realize it. A lot, but yeah. not, not, not more than 5%. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot more these days, but like, I mean, I, I didn't realize there was as much as yeah. I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put a percentage amount, but I mean, I, I will just say there's a lot more than I originally thought. I thought it was pretty much like yeah, it, it's a hundred. We'll have to go over some of them. That'll be yeah, yeah, yeah. To look at to look at Amazon. No, it'd be it would it would be really interesting to look at Jungle Scout and like look at some categories and try to find a bunch of products that are good selling products that would qualify for like something that you would want to sell yourself and then try to look and find us manufacturers like that yeah. would be interesting for sure. And even as a YouTube video doing that, I'm sure people would be intrigued because the supply chain and logistics of, of getting something made in the U S and just sending it directly to, you know, your house is so much easier and cheaper than paying for air freight or sea freight from China to here and then paying customs and like it, it's actually it's insane if you think about it. The fact that you can get something for you know thousands of miles away. I don't know exactly how far away it is. I need a map, maybe Google Maps, but I you know thousands of miles away. You get the point, and you can get it here and produce it, or you can produce it and get it here for cheaper than something that's maybe a couple hundred miles from your your house that someone could just drive to you. You know what I mean? Right. Like yeah. the the cost of labor and the cost of materials and everything like that is just it must be insane in the U.S. compared to China, or it is yeah. insane. Well, I mean, time, time is money, too. So, I mean, like, it takes time to get all that over to, you know, back you know, to the U.S. and stuff. I mean, and you, you're paying for the shipping and stuff. Um, what I like from uh, getting U.S. US suppliers, um, whether it's, you know, wholesale or, or actually, like, they, they're, if they're white labeling, private label, whatever, um, making my product, whatever it is, like, it's just they can ship it really, really quick. Like, they can even do make there's a lot of suppliers that you know you come in and it's like, hey, can you make my product as I'm selling it? So like that that way I don't have to necessarily like we're we're gonna definitely plan on buying a lot more, but I you know we're trying to you know launch our brand or do this or that, and then they'll probably give you a quote. It's gonna be more expensive, mm -hmm. but yet you 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 less risk. So you're like, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get my product to rank and have a good um, I, I, I forecast. I'm gonna forecast what's gonna happen, and then now when I buy the product on hand, um, to kind of automate because if I'm shipping it into the warehouse or whatever, I don't have to you know necessarily have all these VAs or anything like that. It's just uh, it's super automated. So then that at, at that point it's like we're good to go. Obviously, you want to make sure you can profit. So you're seeing what it's gonna sell for. You're you're looking at your uh, PPC campaigns. You're you're looking at like oh, I don't know if you're Utilizing email lists or building an email list, and I always do say this: like I, everybody gets caught up in just trying to make a profit on an item. Mm -hmm. It is important to find items that you can buy, like like that, that people will buy every single month from you. So like like beauty stuff or like you know like there's a lot of like supplement stuff or something in, in a certain category that people have to buy every single month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that's that's really really powerful because then then you're like or something that they would also be able to like let's just say they bought one thing. And then you can also pitch other things that are very similar and or uh, along the same lines. Yeah, that's why I like having like the idea of building a brand because you can yeah. pitch things that are similar to it. But I know what you're saying. Things that people use and then they need more of it is like very – yeah, it's a good business. It just makes it more more time effective and it's like you're putting all this money into PPC – and maybe maybe like you had to you know get all these email lists or build the email list or whatever you're doing and and uh, or utilizing like um, I don't know Groupon and, and you're doing super super URLs to build the email email list and stuff. Um, you you want to make sure that you can actually like like have something to to make it worth your while. And so I, I just that's like um, not just a double edged sword but like a triple edged sword because you know then that then they'll actually keep coming coming back and then you don't have to keep pitching them um, all. Like again, and again, and again. Yeah, there are uh, sure. just yeah. So it's 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 super cool from that so, perspective. But. Um, because this channel is about drop shipping and retail drop shipping mainly. You got any final thoughts on anything? I'm trying to wrap this up here, but you got any final thoughts on anyone trying to get into retail drop shipping on Amazon right now? Like, what do you what do you suggest? Do you think it's still still a viable business to start? I mean, again, like it's it's just something where unless unless you're doing it where, um, and I know Amazon, and I actually uh, heard, you know, CJ was saying that like Amazon was cracking down less 
for people that are doing uh, like doing online arbitrage, or retail arbitrage. It's just the brands are still going to be the brands, and, and they're going to have all these IP components. So you're, you're definitely going to want to make sure that if um, if you are going to do uh, retail arbitrage, like like it's you, you have you're looking at like the the list of what what you can and cannot sell, and then the stuff you can sell. I mean, it's like going the extra mile and and, and trying to make sure that like okay, I I I'm I'm 100% allowed to sell this product. I'm not going to have issues with IP complaints. I'm not going to have like these, uh, like this, all this stuff, and 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 have my business be become a liability. Um, having this Amazon and suspension insurance policy, okay, like stuff like that has got to be there. Being able to get those statements of authorization on deck, being able to have like invoices on deck, like that 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 it just it's just all it's it's hedging your business because ultimately, like I mean, even if you're doing wholesale, like even if you're doing wholesale, I just want to make sure we're clear on this. You can still get IP complaints right and left, and people have said, "Oh, I get, I've been doing wholesale, and I, I'm, I'm get, I get more IP complaints." Okay, I, and and I mean, we, I've seen this as well. Like, there's certain suppliers that Amazon that doesn't even like, and you can send statements of authorization, invoices, and they're not going to reinstate you because they just hate that supplier. They don't like them. It, they, they, it's just the way the format of the invoice, the way the format of the statement of authorization. So ultimately, there's a lot of things that quirky things. Um, all throughout Amazon, and when we say, sorry, when we say, sorry, come on, Matt. I did not know. So I apologize for the interruption. Yeah, there's a lot of things that, um, yeah, that ultimately, like, that can come in in, in any business. Anyway, man, I, I appreciate you coming on and, and talking with me. We covered covered a lot of good stuff tonight. I hope I hope the people listening were able to get some value. And if if they weren't, then um, no idea what they're doing. Thanks, man. Appreciate you coming on. Bye. Yep. Good night, guys.